Thank you for watching this presentation movie. My name is Tatsuya Tagawa, and in this video, I'd like to present our research on event-based camera simulation using Monte Carlo Pass Racing. Unfortunately, the first author, Yuta, couldn't do so due to his recent graduation from the university, so I will take the button to share our study with you. I'd like to highlight that this is a collaborative study by Waseda University, Hitotsubashi University, and Chiba University. First, let's introduce the concept of the event-based camera. Unlike conventional RGB cameras, an event-based camera detects changes in scene brightness as signals. A distinctive feature of event-based cameras is the asynchronous shutter operation, which activates only for pixels where brightness changes are detected. As a result, when compared to standard RGB cameras that trigger the shutter for all pixels, event-based cameras not only operate at significantly higher speeds but also consume less battery power. Furthermore, because they only detect changes in brightness, their observable dynamic range is extensive. While a standard RGB camera might have a dynamic range of around 60 dB, event-based cameras reach up to 140 dB. Given these advantages, many recent studies focus on using event-based cameras in computer vision systems. For example, there are studies that apply event-based cameras to SRAM using UAV or drone aerial photography and to the tracking of objects moving extremely fast. In the SRAM application, event detection is used for feature point matching and the low battery consumption becomes a significant advantage when mounting on drones. On the other hand, for object tracking, they successfully track fast-moving objects without the need for high-speed cameras, which is order of magnitude more expensive than an event-based camera. While event-based cameras have been used across many systems, there is often an issue with the lack of data during system development. Existing research has proposed several systems that take a conventional video as input and output an event-based video. However, methods to obtain a physically accurate event video from 3D computer graphics scenes have been scarcely researched. In particular, generating an event video based on Monte Carlo Pass Racing which is a standard in the computer graphics field, has no research. In practice, we can first generate an RGB video from a 3D scene using Monte Carlo Pass Racing, and following this, we can obtain an event-based video using an existing image-based event simulator named eSIM. So let's see whether this approach works appropriately. In short, Simply combining existing techniques doesn't work. The videos here show that Monte Carlo Pass Racing often obtains noisy video frames. So when you apply event detection directly to noisy this noisy video, it doesn't give us an adequate event video. Moreover, to obtain a clean video suitable for event detection using Monte Carlo Pass Racing, it requires a substantial amount of computational time. In our research, we propose a method to give clear event videos from input videos with a significant amount of noise. We use information obtained during past racing and implement a weighted linear regression problem. This approach not only reduces the noise in the video, but also allows us to theoretically derive a new threshold for event detection based on the residuals of the weighted linear regression. Let's see the video here for the result of our approach. As this video shows, our method has successfully obtained the event video that is much cleaner than that of the previous one of a conventional technique. From the next slide, I'll elaborate on the processes of our method. Our method is based on the denoising technique using weighted linear regression proposed by Moon et al. 2014. Their approach solves a regression problem predicting the pixel intensities of the denoised video using what's termed in the CG field as a G buffer, which is also a set of pixel attributes. In our implementation, the G buffer or the power pixel attributes is a nine dimensional vector. The first three dimensions represent the position of the scene surface, 
another three denote the direction of the normal vector, and the last three represent the color of the material. We collect nine dimensional vectors from neighboring pixels of our target pixel to regress its denoise pixel intensity. By doing so, we've been able to substantially reduce high frequency noise as shown in the video presented. Now, let's see what happens when we apply event detection after using this denoising method. Here is the result after applying the previous denoising technique to a noisy video, which is followed by the event detection. As you can see, while the high frequency noise is removed in the denoised video, it still contains low frequency noise, which causes a bunch of events being detected improperly in the output event video. So simply applying existing denoising methods to input video is insufficient for generating event videos, and we still need to develop a technique to solve this problem. The technical highlights of our method are twofold. First, instead of focusing on the changes in brightness, we threshold the increase in residuals from the weighted linear regression. Second, the threshold for these residuals is given as a square of the threshold for brightness changes. For an overall technical details, please refer to our paper. However, I will introduce you a brief explanation of each point. In the picture of the proposed method shown on the right, we determine the parameters of the weighted linear regression model a la frame where an event occurs. Using this model, as time progresses on the same pixel, the pixel attribute gradually derives from the linear regression model, resulting in an increase in the residuals. Our approach regards an event to have occurred when this increase surpasses a specific threshold delta. More concretely, we use the weighted linear regression model shown in this slide. The model parameters are alpha and beta, and they are determined by solving the least two squares problem defined by the feature vectors of neighboring pixels around the target pixel. Let's suppose the parameters alpha and beta at time t as alpha sub t and beta sub t. Then, at another frame as time s, we compute the residual using this equation with the parameters alpha sub t and beta sub t, rather than calculating the alpha sub s and beta sub s at the new time point. Actually, the residual threshold delta will be the square of the brightness threshold tau. Please refer to our paper for the derivation. In this way, we can avoid repeatedly solving the regression problem at every frame and can reduce the computational time significantly. The singular validate composition, which might be rather computationally expensive to be performed all pixels of all frames, is required to solve the regression problem. Because this part is a bottleneck of this denoising technique, we can significantly reduce the computational time owing to the sparsity of our method to solve the problem only at a limited number of pixels. Let's now see the experimental evaluation of our results. In this experiment, we utilize several videos calculated using Monte Carlo pass tracing with 32 pass samples per pixel denoted as SPP in this slide. It's worth noting that to achieve sufficiently noise reduced video frames using Monte Carlo pass tracing requires tracing 1496 pass samples per pixel. This calculation takes over 10 hours of computation, which many people may consider impractical. In subsequent slides, I will compare our proposed method with a couple of combination of existing techniques that serves as our baselines. This slide presents the result of the comparison for the first scene, San Miguel. As you can see from the video, visually the output from our proposal method aligns most closely with the reference video. Quantitatively as well, our method outperforms the baseline both in terms of the f-score and the chamfer distance. In terms of computation time, although it doesn't be the efficiency of the image-based simulator e which only uses simple thresholding, it is evident that our method requires less computation compared to e plus WLR, which performs denoising calculation for all the pixels. 
This slide presents the result for our second scene named Living Room. As with the previous San Miguel scene, the result of our method are closest to the reference and quantitatively our method outperforms the two baseline techniques. For more details on these results, please refer to our paper and its supplementary materials. Okay, let's now wrap up the presentation. In this research, we propose an event-based camera simulation system that is fully based on Monte Carlo past racing. Unlike the conventional techniques of thresholding brightness changes, our method operates the thresholding for the residuals of weighted linear regression problem. Owing to this, our method has shown to perform both quantitatively and qualitatively better than the combination of prior techniques that can be seen as alternatives to our method. For those further interested in our work, our GitHub page provides the code, dataset, and the additional result of our research. Thank you.